Hey guys, I hope you're going well. So I wanted to do a video today on a toolbox and workshop tour. I just want to show you around uh, the area that I do the repairs, the engine repairs, some of the tools I use and uh, kind of just let you have a bit of an insight into behind the scenes of the videos that I take. So here we are. So I suppose the first thing is the two areas that uh, that I do the engine repairs. The first one is here. This is like the main desk. And uh, this is probably where I do the majority of the repairs. Uh, I can easily access my toolbox, which we'll go through shortly. And in each one of these drawers, I've got uh, different tools, uh, which we'll cover as well. Just makes things really easy and accessible. So let's start from this side. We have, oh, if I can give you a bit more room, entrance, shop press, toolbox. I put some shelves up. And that one's got the Villiers that I did the work on. I love that, that's a Briggs. And then I've sold all my saws except the two. These two are really special. It's the 034 Super. It's probably one of Steel's best ever chainsaws they've ever made. And that is the MS260, which is my father's saw. Uh, both those have had full engine rebuilds. I'm really proud of them. And they're the ones that I've kept out of the lot. Then toolbox. Not a lot to say. We'll go over that in a bit more detail shortly. And then I've got an ultrasonic cleaner, which I can just pull out and use as and when I need. And I have a couple of really bright lights. So if I really need to see something clearly or I'm recording a video like we are now, then I'll put that one on and I'll put that one on too. This is the desk with the laptop. Uh, so I can easily access information, IPL service manuals, YouTube videos, everything is done there. And uh, we'll carry on moving around. We have a vice, a Dawn 100 vice. Really useful, it's just, yeah, I haven't got quite enough space. I'd like space that side of the vise, but uh, we've got to work with what we've got. And we've got a little compressor. It's nothing special, but all it does is it allows me to just blow things off. And that's what I really want it for. I don't run air tools, I run battery tools. Uh, drill press, move this chair out of the way. Then in here is the second repair area. Try and zoom you out a little bit. So at the top, we've got all the different engine oils and paints and this, that, and the other. And then we have this, the, the, yeah, the, the, the uh, second engine repair area, I suppose. So I'll just wheel my chair around and we have a light. So up here, little light, where's it gone? There we go. So I can do, this area is really lovely when I want to work on a piece of equipment and then close the doors and not have to see it and it doesn't take up any space. So if I'm doing a project that I know is gonna take a bit of time, I'll tend to do it here rather than what I've just showed you, that other desk a minute ago. And it's just a convenience factor. Uh, well, the, I really like the style of toolbox because it gives me the ability to be able to store things away and still have a deep top surface where I can put some of the taller, taller tools. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Right, let's start with the top back rail. Uh, these are very expensive. They're Star Willy. Um, they, for me, they're not really necessary, but they're nice to use. And the most important thing, I mentioned it in someone else's video, the most important thing with spanners and sockets is that the heads are thin. If uh, you get ones with like lifetime warranties, they bulk them up and you just can't get them in anywhere. Then we have, let's start on this side. Three breaker bars, a couple of Phillips head screwdrivers and a scrunch, uh, some German pliers. Yeah, they've been good. The only thing is I hold objects and then I'll put those onto uh, the wire wheel and I brush away the coating and now they're rust. So I have to keep oil on them. Z-bed pliers or Z-bend pliers. They're used to create Z-bends in accelerator, throttle cables, etc. You can see one there. Then I have some soft nose pliers, really useful for anything you don't want to mar and damage. And they're replaceable jaws, very useful. And then we've got a couple of steel tools, a T27 and an eight mil. The beautiful thing about this eight mil is how thin the walls are. So you can really get into tight areas. Uh, and I've found it to be so useful in a T27 down there as well. Next up, we've got Imperial in quarter and three eighths. And then we come to the selection of sockets. So we have um, Milwaukee quarter inch deep impacts. Then we have quarter inch deep and shallow chrome. And we have three eighths deep and shallow chrome, three eighths impact deep and shallow. And then we have half inch deep. <laughs> there we go. A couple of bits at the back. So this is a 
21 mil, I think it is. Yeah, 21 mil. And super thin walls, the thinnest walls you're ever gonna get, basically. And uh, really good for getting spark plugs out. It's a spark plug socket. Then I have a selection of different adapters. And knock, uh, knuckles? <laughs> knuckles in uh, quarter and three eighths. We've got a bunch of different adapters and then some short extension bars. Just everything that I found that I need in there. Loctites, a few of the main Loctites that I use. Extension bars, use these for the impact all the time. Three eighths and quarter inch ratchets. Super useful, I think I did a video on this one. It's the Weera uh, T-handle. You can then slip any of the quarter inch hex in the end and they pop in and pop out. And then we've got Phillips, long Phillips, which is really lovely. And then we have a selection of long quarter inch hex shanked torques, as well as Allen. I use these all the time, as you can see, and I've actually got a spare set that I'm gonna show you shortly. Quarter inch breaker bar, a couple of uh, standard extensions in quarter and three eighths. And then we have Imperial and metric uh, hex keys. A little light, I always keep a torch on me. And then the last thing is just some flatheads, a couple of specialty tools at the end that's really useful for installing the, the chain brake. There we go, we got it. It's the chain brake lever. There's a spring on there. And then the last specialty tool from Still, which is to remove and install. Gosh, my mind's not working. Clutch springs. There we go. So they go back in there. They don't get used that much, but when they are, they're super useful and I really appreciate them. So that's the top layer. That's the layer that I use mostly for just general stuff and uh, it works, I move things around from time to time. Put that down. Top left is kind of a mix and match drawer, a bunch of different stuff. So we've got valve lapping tools, we've got a couple of hammers, we've got brass, and then we have a soft face and just a normal uh, steel hammer. Then we have really small, down to, I don't know what, but very small spanners. And then we have some specialty carb tools, punches, and removal tools for Welsh plugs and different stuff inside the carb. A bunch of specialty tools from Still for installing and removing seals and bearings, but of course they can be used across the board. Um, the steel bearings are generally really generic. These are Matteo's tools inside here. So Matteo makes uh, tools that pull the crankshaft in through the bearing without pre-loading the bearing, they're really lovely. They are fair, fairly expensive, but uh, they're worth it. And again, it's not just for chainsaws, they can be used on any equipment that, that they thread into. And under here, we have circuit installation tools from Still, really useful. Next one down is, this is all the measuring drawer. This is the most expensive drawer. Uh, much of this is Mitotoyo. If it's not that, it's Kimchrome. Um, so Mitotoyo, we have telescopic gauges. We've been talking about those recently in the WhatsApp group. Then we have small hole gauges for um, any of the small areas that the telescopic gauges don't fit. We have Mitotoyo micrometers in all different sizes, one, two, and three under there as well as some Kinchrome verniers. Uh, I have a Mitotoyo, it's actually Kinchrome pot, but uh, a Mitotoyo dial ball gauge, a dial ball gauge, a dial indicator, really useful. Uh, quarter and three eighths torque wrenches. Under here, I've got a compression tester, stethoscope, so I can use those for listening into engines, as well as a leak down test that I made myself. If you're gonna buy measuring equipment, buy once, cry once, and get the best you can. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. Last draw, I suppose, we've got uh, really small twist drill bits. Uh, really useful if you want to drill out uh, carburetors, if you want to drill out jets, very, very useful drill bits. Then we have a test light, which is in there. A bunch of different files. These are just cheap, but I, I'm not kind to them. So uh, yeah, they do the job. Uh, punches, uh, they're there. And we have a uh, spark tester by Opima, tachometer by Opima as well. A few more pieces of measuring equipment uh, for air gaps and this, that and the other, and feeler gauges and setting the uh, electro gap on spark plugs. Shout out to my American friends, Klein Tools Multimeter, love it, really, really lovely. Auto ranging, which I appreciate. And then we have blade balancer, uh, moisture meter, infrared thermometer, a stand, Briggs tool to remove the old starters, a valve removal tool or valve spring compressor tool, I suppose is what it's called. And that is that drawer also complete. And then it just leaves us uh, the stuff on the outside. So I have a 
pack of specialty screwdrivers in there. They're for tuning. Timing light, for obvious reasons, timing. And then we have these small bottles. I have uh, a whole bunch of these with all different fluids in. I absolutely, you can see, I absolutely love them. And then we've got a few different uh, thread repair kits. The circuit removal tools. At the back there, you might just be able to see uh, a case splitting tool. In front of those, we have some grease, a few different things like oils, and that's actually just soapy water for leak down testing or pressure and vacuum testing. Perfect pack of screwdrivers for carb rebuilds. Uh, sorry, carb tuning. Everyone's still, uh, someone at the shop said, here's a pack of them. I asked if they had one or two, and he gave me a whole pack of them. Some removal tools in there, clutch and flywheel removal tools, all different types in there. Bearing removal tools, three jaw and two jaw pullers, and a crow's foot or harmonic balancer puller set in there. And then just a file, a thread file and a cylinder hone. We got there. Milwaukee, oh gosh. I really like Milwaukee, I think they're great. I'm not necessarily a fanboy. I, I just think well, I, look, I like the to be honest I'll be completely honest I went with Milwaukee because I like the color and then, <clears throat> uh, this is a pressure and vacuum drawer so I've got the, the mighty vac really useful if you're doing any two stroke repair get yourself a mighty vac a whole bunch of tubing of different sizes fuel lines spark plug adapter you need to make a spark plug adapter if you want to do leak down tests or sorry pressure and vac vacuum tests what we've we got over here uh, a whole heap of junk Dremel stuff really Dremel, and then if I want to install some bearings and I can't heat them up, then I can uh, use them and pull through. So there we go, guys. A little toolbox and workshop tool, workshop and toolbox tool. It's cool. It's always nice to see where people work and, and uh, their little hobby areas. It's always good fun. And that is mine. I've built it up. And I suppose I'll finish off with just saying, <clears throat> what do I like and what do I not like of the tools I've got? I'll be completely honest. I'm not one to hold on to tools unless I really like them. Uh, unless I think that they are good, I'll, I'll just sell them. I know lots of people will probably just say, oh, it's all right, it's, it's, it's okay, and they'll just leave it there, but I haven't really got, firstly, I haven't got the space to do it, and secondly, it's just having a tool that I can't use or I don't think is particularly good irritates me, so I'll just get rid of it. And then I suppose some of my favorite tools, would that have to probably have to be the impact tools that I use the most. It's probably my most used tool, the M12 impact driver. It's just so small, so light, so compact. <laughs> And I run a six amp power battery, the biggest I can get in 12, uh, M12, and uh, it just lasts and lasts and lasts. So there we go, I think we're going to end it there. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, in fact, yeah, I'd love to see your workspace and like a toolbox tour, toolbox tour, that's right. So uh, yeah, if you do a video, tag me in it or just let me know, drop me a message and just say, hey, I've just uploaded a video. I'd love to see it. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you very, very soon. Bye.